We're back, ladies and gentlemen. Game one went over to a dominant BLG over EDG. A surprise pocket pick in the Shivana full AP with a little bit of help from the uh, the Triple Inferno Drake. So hello, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be bringing you game two very, very shortly. But of course, can't talk about that without talking about the MVP. And it was never going to be anybody else. Meteor is your MVP from that game one. Guy just did so much damage. Shivana are rare sighting and competitive, and dragons are rare sightings basically everywhere. But Meteor really showed us what can she do if she gets ahead. She had over 100 armor without building any armor items. And if you look at the way Flame Breath works, it doesn't have the greatest of base damages, but it has a 1.0 AP ratio. So if you get ahead with items, if you get those drakes rolling, this is what you can do with it. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of bursts, and it's a lot of silliness. Uh, I don't know if we will see it again. We are going to be swapping sides for this particular one. It will be EDG on the blue with BLG on the red. But I don't think that the Shivana was necessarily a kind of, you know, huge issue for the side of uh, EDG. I just think that EDG just didn't play around it very well. Yeah, we definitely could say that I think BLG would have won this game with another pick uh, as well. They were already very dominant on the bottom side coming into this, but this really made it look easy, and it really made EDG kind of second-guess themselves in their strategies. Uh, what I think Meteor did so well this game was how hard he was actually focused in the early game. EDG built this composition with push priority in the, uh, in the mid lane with a good level one with Braum and Ezreal. Uh, to dominate his jungle, and he was still able to run away with a very, very good lead. He was up two levels over JJ by the mid game, and at the end of it, completely out. Of control. So, what do you want to see from EDG? Because that's a that one's a little bit of a wake up call. It's gonna kind of slap over the face because they go, "All right." This is series, and BLG have come to play. What's your adaptation? I want to see EDG number one just wake up and figure out who they are. Because this <laughs> has been EDG in the past and in the present as well. They're not great drafters in the playoff uh, uh, playoff run, especially in game ones. I think they overrate their own capability to play difficult mm. compositions. That was a comp where they had very little initiation, and uh, they should really start to think about themselves as the early game, as the laning dominant team, rather than this team that is, you know, oh, we're just better players. We can play the late game alongside with BLG. I don't think that's the case. However, this time they have selected themselves blue side once more. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little bit worried about that one. I, I typically prefer my lane dominant teams on the red side, as do most teams in the LPL. Yeah, and you want to keep that last lane a little bit of a secret, use those yes. flexes. But B, uh, but EDG is very uh, peculiar in this sense is that when they want to go lane dominant, they actually go to the blue side. And what they do is they pick up their bot lane in the second and third pick together. So I think we're going to see a lot more Xyrocons if it's left open, or we're going to see something like the Kai'Sa Nautilus, something that's very strong, has a lot of crowd control, and can be easily snowballed. Basically a kill lane with a, with a jungler that brings his own crowd control. And so for BLG, is it just kind of business as usual? No real need to change what's not broken? Kind of, you know, just kind of set up a, a pretty decent team fight slash, you know, kind of sieging composition that just kind of rolls over teams in the late? I would say that, yeah, BLG basically, I think they have the champion pools to pick themselves out of any situation. They're not going to fall behind that far in lane. That's that's basically what we got from, uh, from game one. So... If you're not going to fall that far behind, you might as well go for the scaling as well. You're basically allowed to do so. So I would still see a lot of things like the Ezreal, the Corky being very high priorities in their draft phase. And pretty much for ADD, just a team fighter that can survive landing phase. He picked a lot of, believe it or not, he still has the Scion. <laughs> the yeah, split still known well. for it. But I wanted to say as well, just a quick, quick fact, uh -huh. fact even. He keeps his 100% win right now on Poppy for the summer Ooh, split. Had five well games previously. Thank you, Hysterics, for picking me that information. But you know, kept his information or kept his 100% uh, win streak going, and you can see why. He just looks comfortable on the champion, regardless if it's a winning or losing matchup. He plays the Scion. He plays the Mundo, uh, even this split. So <laughs> I think. For ADD, it doesn't really matter what he gets. He, he will find his way out of lane against Jinnu, and it's just about making sure that you later on have scaling picks in the mid and the AD carry position to crush uh, crush EDG when it goes past that 30 minute mark. And for kind of a, a small little kind of, I would suppose say kind of a, a 
a worry, if you like. It took me a while to figure out that word, but a worry for the side of EDG is that we saw BLG really hone in on those mid lane bans first off and like straight off the bat. So I want to see if that's actually going to be a huge issue for Scout because we talked about how he was probably the, the main reason this team has been looking so good outside of Jinu and all of a sudden he's no longer able to do what he's been doing all split. And he is the largest laning deficit that BLG have. Kuro against Scout has not been favorable to Kuro whatsoever. So you can see them really target down. The Kiana was out. The uh, I believe the Aurelia was taken away as well. So this time around, we could see uh, the best draft for EDG, I believe, would be first pick Akali and then just pick up Kaisa Nautilus. You have a bit of a hyper carry potential in the late game as well. So that's what I want to see uh, EDG drafting for. On BLG side, I, I still think they keep the same bands in a sense. So I don't expect any Kiana, Akali, or Aurelia to be given over. I know they did ban Jace the last time around, but Aurelia is also something that Scout is very terrifying on. I'll see what the bands are. Of course, there's going to be a swap of sides. So first pick will go over to the side of EDG as BLG get themselves set up and ready to go. Should be in the pick band very, very shortly. And for BLG, like you said, they're not worried about anything. I think if the Shivana is banned away from, from them by EDG, I think that's actually a bit of a mistake yeah. coming out from EDG. I don't think the Shivana was the issue. I think the issue was they didn't deal with the Shivana. And that could have been a Gragas. That could have been, that could have been a multitude of different things. Shivana champions. compounded on the losing bot lane. That's essentially what happened there. They lost the Drakes, lost the armor and magic resistance to Shivana. And is looking at Kuro that last game. 35% of his team's damage. We saw that last crit he did onto Eyeboy. Killed him from 50% health, 6-0 and 5. He's really showing up for playoffs. Of course, we are playing on patch 9.15. So not quite yet with the uh, 9.16 nerfs to a couple of these champions. So still waiting for a couple of those things. So we should see some pretty, you know, kind of standard lanes as such uh, coming out from both these sides. Kuro again, ex-world's champ, or not world champion, world finalist. Um, you know, he's been around a while. He's actually been here for a good five, six years almost in the competitive scene. Yeah, he's been very, uh, you know, very dominant on the scene. And in 2019, he joined BLG in their complete shakeup. First split really sh uh, changed the team dynamic where uh, BLG was more of a scrappy skirmishing team with Mole. Uh, and Chieftain on the roster, but then they swapped over to Kuro, slowed down, really dominated the team fight. Coach Sim and Kuro both were on Najin Black Shield, so the coaching staff and the players, great synergy there. They basically set the tone and the framework for BLG to follow in. They played slow, safe, and very smart. And that's kind of been the mantra, if you like. Slow, safe, smart from BLG. It was a death of a thousand cuts in the last game. You just got objective after objective after objective. We're going to jump into pick and ban for the next set of picks. Yeah, both coaches lining up right here. You have Coach Hart on the other side. And EDG taking away the safe carry options we were talking about in the bot lane. Also the Tom Kench, a great snipe here. What that means is that they're going to have a kill lane for sure in the bottom. Oh yeah, that straight away screams to me that they are looking to try and snowball Eyeboy and Mako. Of course, EDG now with the first pick. They do not get the Akali, the Kiana, or the Yumi, but they do get themselves the Silas, and that's a bit of a flex pretty much throughout the entirety of the top half of the map. You know, the interesting here is that Scout uh, doesn't actually play that much Silas after the uh, the changes to the champion. It's mainly been a Jijit, uh, Jijit pick afterwards. So they could still be hiding Scout for a counter pick here. And the big question here is, what will EDG's kill lane look like? Well, BLG have already decided what they want Kuro to go on to, and that's going to be that pride and trusted Azir. Have left open the Aatrox as well. So we see the solo lanes straight away for BLG being picked up. And you can see there on the bottom of your screen, eight and one, this split for this Azir for Kuro. And the Zyrakon, you called it in the pregame. They're going for that kill lane. They're looking to try and snowball Eyeboy. Yeah, that's why they banned away the Tom Kench. Now, talking about the uh, the matchups here, what we've seen from BLG is the Aatrox has only been going to top lane. No one else touches the champion. So BLG's laners are pretty much set at this point. 
what it does mean that is that Jinu could get a very favorable matchup into the top side. Jinu can play something like the Jax. He already demonstrated his ability on the Camille. So it go does give EDG a lot of options to play very aggressive in both of their lanes. And I'm actually quite surprised that BLG would be willing to show their hand this early. Let's see if they are punished for it. Once the bans start to come in, you would imagine EDG going to get rid of some of the more safer supports as well. The Morgana is one that they hovered, obviously, on the side of BLG. It is a standard counter to the Rakan engage. However, it is going to be more focused towards that jungle. That is what EDG feel is the more appropriate side. Olaf still yet to be picked. For BLG, this is a very confident draft in Jijit's abilities. They're showing their top laner first just to get Jijit, uh, not Jijit, sorry, Meteor, a better matchup here where he can influence uh, the enemy jungle, maybe decide how to play vertical, and just save his bot lane that way. So, a, a very interesting draft and something very unusual where you see both of the solo lanes just kind of shown earlier on. Good confidence from BLG. See that confidence is misplaced. However, right now, I see the Alistair going to be banned away there by EDG. So, so far, I was going to say they've left open the Nautilus. They've left open the, you know, the Morgana, the Leona. There's a lot of options here for the BLG bot laner. And Leona looks like it's going to be it. So they're fighting kill with kill. And now, Scout has to show his hand. What is he going to pick into the mid lane here? He does have a lot of Silas games, but there were those were earlier down in the season. So I wonder if he's still going to go back onto the matchup. And this will also give BLG information on who is actually going to play in the jungle role. EDG, yeah, just like hovering over. Going to go with the Camille for Jinu. Definitely had a decent game of that against the side of Sooning. Camille has got... It's kind of a skill matchup. It's like the old school kind of 2015 um, Fiora versus Darius matchup we used to see, where it's kind of a skill one to see who kind of wins out on that one. Overall, you would give the favor to the Aatrox, as he's got a lot more ways of interrupting the hook shot, which is on a much longer cooldown. And the Jarvan picked up here for JJ. So right now, you're looking at just lane dominant kind of early game here from EDG. Yeah, what EDG are looking to do is basically just punish the lanes as hard as possible. All three lanes have incredible crowd control. It's going to be very easy for them to pick up lane kills left and right. As they swap around the roster, we are going to see Scout go back into the Silas. He was uh, hovering the Zoe for a while. I actually wanted to see him go on that one. But probably deciding that a double AP was not the way to go. So they're going to go, uh, going to go with the Jarvan instead for the mid jungle. Sejuani locked in here for a Meteor as well. So right now, kind of pretty much the same as last game for the side of BLG. It's good, strong team fighting. They're going to look for Meteor to kind of shore up that slightly weaker early game. And for EDG, they're going to look to try and snowball. Now, the difference between last game and this game is they have Engage. They have ways of actually starting a fight that isn't just their mid laner kind of quote unquote suiciding into it. So. They need to be able to find those advantages, they need to make those advantages count, and overall, EDG, they need to try and, you know, put BLG off their game. This is a very interesting draft coming from BLG. A couple interesting things they did is that they held onto the Leona pick for a very long time. Leona was never picked by uh, Shingmo before in the regular split, so EDG went for the Alistar ban instead of the Leona. And that makes a world of difference in the bot lane, because now the kill lane advantage actually goes over to BLG. So EDG, they need to they need to reorient themselves. Their best kill lane is actually in the top side. If they can go onto the Aatrox, Aatrox from behind looks pretty pathetic a lot of times, and it's very easy to get that gank off with Camille and the Jarvan. So EDG, they have to set set their mindset straight. Just go for the top. Try to snowball against ADD to bring the series back. Of course, for. BLG, they're looking to try and take this series as clean and as quickly as they like. Of course, it is going to be their first playoff berth within the 2019 season. And they do not want it to end here. However, EDG still fighting, still looking good. Can't really count them out until it's, you know, over. But overall, we're going to see exactly how this one goes. I was about to say that those are the wrong logos, but it's actually just a cycle of all the different teams in the, in the, in the LPL Summoner's Rift Sky as we pay homage to the, the, our fallen brothers of IG and Sooning. And we are on the rift for game two of this best of five. All right, all right, we're gonna stop you right there. 
It's just a cacophony of different people shouting. Take a look at EDG's bot lane, their summoner choice, and their item choice. They know they're not going to have an advantage in this kill lane whatsoever. Going for the cleanse and the heal plus the uh, plus the ancient coin line. So this is good signs from EDG. They know where they want to go, and they most likely will be looking for a potential vertical here. Yeah, just going to push back off the red buff. The side of BLG have to respect that there. You can see Vision has gone down as well. It's going to be a red buff steal straight off the bat. Meteor going to be able to pick up his blue buff and then obviously transition as cleanly as he can towards the enemy red. So like you said, just kind of 100% giving up on that bot side from the side of EDG. And I like this. I like this idea. You talked about how they have to swap their focus from the bot side kill lane to the top side kill lane. This is exactly what EDG have done. Yeah, and if they go vertical, they actually have a huge advantage here because EDG's bot lane is almost impossible to die. They have the heal on the support and also the cleanse onto Ivoy. It's very difficult to, to equalize if, say, your top lane ADD is getting punished underneath power. On the flip side, EDG with the double hard crowd control, they can tower dive extremely easily onto ADD. Overall, EDG looking to try and see if they can do something into this top side. We actually see Grass the Undying going to be picked up here by Jinu, looking for the sustain rather than the burst on top of the Camille. This is what they're setting up for. Now, Jinu did not straight out win that trade, but he's taking ADD low in the HP de department. This means if Charvin goes over, it's almost an insta-kill that cannot be answered. The full clear going to be used here. They both look for this... Big Raptor, it's actually going to be the Sejuani that picks that one up. Neither actually had their smite. So this is pretty tough for Meteor. He's trying to defend his top lane, but in doing so, he only got one quadrant of the jungle. And Jija is going to be able to walk away with three. So Jija right now, he has so many camps he can go back to. And, uh, you know, that's a sacrifice that Meteor had to make. He basically had to say, you know what, we can't let ADD fail here. I cannot get anything on the bottom side. I'm going to be the one taking the loss for top lane. That was lovely seeing your uh, your teammate take the bullet for you. Yeah. It's like, all right, all right, I'm gonna I'm I'm put my fate in you and say that come 25 minutes, you're gonna carry me. All I have to do is land my glacial prison. Let's just put a deal on that. But like you said there, I was trying to put the pressure down, if you like, as we see Scout just trying to push up this mid lane, looking for a back, Ooh. and ADD gets jumped in by Jinu, and JJ finds himself back up towards this top side. Took his blue buff and then waiting for that minion wave to crash. Very hard to get it to go in. And JJ realizes he's probably just going to waste a lot of time. So we say that though, actually an engage coming in here on the bot side. Cleanse has been used. Heal has been kept a hold of. Ignite and heal burned by BLG. And you talked about how safe this bot lane is. It's a two for one summoner trade in favor of EDG. Yeah, the Leona pick was really smart coming out from BLG. They hit this the entire split, and uh, we didn't get a shot at the top side. However, uh, ADD did look like he gave up some of the minion wave. He's now 15 CS behind, but did successfully avoid the gank coming in. I was going to say, I'm glad Jinu is, uh, you know, playing very respectful right now. Did not recall him that push. Decided to use his extra little bit of time to push himself quite safely over into his own jungle. And uh, JJ was spotted out, but again, no real kind of surprise as such that JJ is focusing up towards this top side. We talked about how it is the more likely of the two lanes or even three lanes for him to go towards. Scout going to be pushed in by Kuro pretty much all game long, but it's on top of Scout to really make use of his level six power spike, which will be coming up very, very soon. And we see uh, JJ just uh, actually not coming to a great CS lead so far. He still has multiple camps that he can pick up. And, uh, this is his first time being on the bot side, yeah. in fairness to him. <laughs> he did yeah. put a lot into the top lane, and yeah. I wonder if Jinu can be, will reward him for it. Kuro, the challenger dodge. Just walk straight. <laughs> Don't juke, you just walk straight. It's the challenger dodge. JJ now in this mid lane, going to clear out the control ward there. Scout just trying to get himself back into a decent matchup. And this wave is good dodge. pretty pretty hefty um, in favor of BLG. ADG trying to just kind of push this up. Very hard for him to freeze on that side. Again, winning out on the trade just slightly. 
But uh, he's gonna have some trouble once uh, once Jinyu decides to hold the wave. This could be an engage. Come here. Scout's the first one to rotate over. The Infernal Drake has been started. EDG do not want to have a situation like they did last game, which has lost all those objectives. It's a double knockoff. Do not land the Glacial Prison, but it'll be used as a zoning tool. The owner goes in. Everyone else from EDG backs up. That's going to be a free objective, pretty cleanly taken there by EDG. Yeah, good move from JJ right there. He frees Silas to come in into the river first. That was a lane where Kuro actually had priority, but he was around the area and forces that artificial priority to come in. Meteor is here. They are going to be able to get the engage straight away. There are flashes available. A lot of damage, wow. though, onto the Leona. Needs to be very careful. Both flash is going to be used by both the AD carries. EDG get themselves out. The LG need to be a little bit more careful. There's still damage in those feathers. Yeah, and that was actually just a flash for flash trade on the AD carry, so I have to give that one to EDG. Played very well during that one. Great stun. Blade Caller coming in from iBoy with the double stun and forces Jinjiao to. Uh, I think that was a very, very, very aggressive flash. Uh, I almost felt like he saw the Winter's Wrath as a, as the concussive blows coming in from Braum, and he was like, ah, I got the stun. Wait a minute, why didn't it work? <laughs> I can do this. Damn, foiled my range. Foiled by my own range. So we see now I the. I can be melee if I want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I identify as melee. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> but. Overall, EDG kind of have a, a, a decent start to this early game, definitely feeling like they're the ones in making the proactive plays. And this is kind of what we wanted to see. This is what we wanted to see them do throughout this, you know, that last game is that they need to be the ones pushing for the advantages, pushing the, you know, the BLG laners back and back so that they do not get to that super comfortable late game scenario that they always love getting. And BLG still have the better scaling composition. If you look at Kaisa and uh, Azir here, I would still give the advantage uh, to them. 200 gold down in the early game it really isn't much. Uh, as long as they are not giving up kills, I think they're in a great position. RNGs for these Drakes have actually been fantastic. Oh, I love it when we get multiple mountains and infernals in playoff. It means you get people fighting yeah. over them. It makes it fun. Quickshot would be proud. The fact that you can just decide to not contest for a Drake and be okay with it is just... Uh, I wish all Drakes were just mountains and dragons. That's true. So much Do you know fun. who has the highest percent of uh, Infernal Drake spawns? Uh, what region? I believe it's EU. No, it's not. It's LCK. Oh. LCK. If I do remember, I could be could be uh, misremembering, but I do believe it is LCK in terms of percentage spawns. They have some can't good take it, script can't, writers can't there. Can't take it as a, uh, a set number because there's just a vast difference in the amount of games that are played. Speaking of games, coming back into this one, EDG JJ finds himself into this bush completely unseen. They jump in. They're trying to get the damage down. They will get the flash out, so that's no... Real engage now for the Leona. It's a summoner blown. Right now, I like what EDG are doing. They're flexing in all three lanes, showing that they can take it, even though BLG technically have the higher kill matchup into this top or bot side. Oh, well, very well done by ADD to get that trade in. Uh, and just talking about the bot lane and what happened right there, we will see a massive advantage for EDG come the next Drake. Very important one as well, still the Mountain Drake. Oh, Scout. Whoa! Okay! <laughs> Swap and Roo! That was definitely the biggest switcheroo, and Scout uh, uh. needs to be careful. Has got Mako, has got JJ, so they should be able to keep him alive relatively easily, but I like that swap. It was like someone just screamed, change places. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing much to come out of it. Scout was basically just fishing for a kill. He knew his support was rotating in. But what? who should be more worried is actually this top side. Uh, unfortunate back for uh, for Jinu. His previous items really didn't give him much combat stats. So he is going back to uh, equalize this. Picks up a Ruby Crystal, so it doesn't really give him any more combat stats. It gives him the Sheen, which is, uh, <laughs> which is the big one there. And this is good timing from Jiji as well. I actually really love this. You know, they are going to have a teleport disadvantage for the Mountain Break, but using that timing with the Power Spike, they can and should be able to secure this Herald. Pick up a nice early Herald. Mako has made his way up as well. Meteor is here, though, so will they look to try and 
fight this. Nope, looks like BLG realizes it's too low. They haven't got themselves set up properly at all. They want to keep the teleport advantage, like you just said, in favor of ADD. And they're just going to back away and get back here, Raptor. I am not done taking you and your gold. I've taken your family. Now I yeah. take you. <laughs> so rude nowadays, you know? You put the time and effort in, and he just, he just walks away, and there's nothing you can do. Can't even kill it. Ungrateful raptors. I will say, the camps regen at an extraordinary rate sometimes. It is kind of incredible. Okay, this is actually quite unexpected coming in from uh, from EDG. Actually, I quite like this play, because right now you can see they're just looking oh. to... They oh, don't get, the, get stop. the stop. That was... A very disrespectful from JJ. They do pop the World Ender, though, on ADD, get themselves some gold. They will give up this Mountain Drake, but I like this priority they're putting in on towards this top side. They're basically saying, we know the Mountain Drake is going down. We're not only going to get the Rift Herald a little bit earlier, but we're also going to try and push in towards this top side. As Kuro did get jumped on there by the Silas, but was not able to land the Upstain and Abduct. And right now, it's just getting money into the hands of, you know, the Camille and the Jarvan. That was really well played from ADD. He actually recognized that uh, there wasn't enough kill threat, uh, and the scuttle, was, uh, the Herald was already going down, so he walks back, picks up all the EXP that he would have lost there, and uh, they still don't lose the tower for the objective. Game is pretty much dead even. Dragon of Peace. 19,000 gold-ish for both sides, as we see. Neither one really making a huge play to make any kind of dominating performance in this early game. So we see that now, ADD without his World Ender. And both junglers towards this top side. So both top laner is going to be feeling pretty safe. Could be a 2v2, as I say that. Here we go, there's the Hextech Ultimatum coming out as well. Going to be immediately disengaged from, though, as Meteor makes his presence known. Really impressed by these ADD trades. He's been consistently winning out on all the footsies in this uh, in this one v one fight. Isn't winning out on the CS though. He does find himself about 10 CS or so behind. Are right, gonna see Jinu trying to back off of this timing, but hey, if you start out with vertical jungle on your side and you have to play through a three v one, I would call this a massive win for ADD. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not saying I'm not saying that he uh, you know he's upset being 10 CS behind. I'm just saying. He is 10 CS behind and actually picks up himself two tower plates as well. So overall, ADD just kind of feeling this matchup, feeling strong in this matchup and really kind of putting Jinu, who we praise so highly as a, you know, the kind of a cornerstone of EDG, putting him down and saying, you are in my lane. Yeah, a lot of the animation cancels we're seeing by ADD are just so smooth. You can see the E backwards at the same time as the Infernal Chain. Jinu couldn't dodge out that on that one, takes the damage. And uh, the way he's been playing this is just absolutely brilliant. Uh, EDG looked like they wanted to focus on the top side, couldn't get anything out of it, and instead are forced to shift back to plan A. Yeah, and ADD finds himself with three turret plates equal on CS despite the five to ten minute mark pretty much being with the Jarvan solely up in that top side and now we might see an engage coming in here Mako has to use the W to get away they will use the solar flare overall bit ambitious I think is the word I would use there from, uh, from BLG not really gonna be able to lock down a recon very difficult yeah, and even though EDG has saw, uh, seen the ultimates go down they still can't over chase this Jinu uh, ADD in the top side Holding on to his teleport advantage he got from himself and the uh, gold turret plating that he was able to outplay Jinu with. This game taking its sweet, sweet time at coming together. And let's talk about how this series really does define the season for both of these teams. Let's talk about how both BLG and EDG are out of world qualifications if they do not win this series. It's what do or die for both of them. What kind of pressure is that? It's tremendous pressure. Really, uh, BLG rebuilding with Koro and ADD. They expect the veterans coming in from Korea to boost them into that uh, area of success. So I would also say even more important for EDG as they could watch their legacy die on the spot. And we're going to see a tower trade going down. I would say small advantage to EG, EDG here because they do end up picking up the experience while ADD has to forfeit some of that. 
Gets jumped on, does not land the Infernal Trades. And we can see them praising him so much for hitting this kind of, you know, winning out on this dancing match, if you like, of kind of, you know, fancy feet. You see how close it is when he does not get that right combo, when he misses it by a frame or two, it goes very drastically away from him. And overall, EDG are always ready to pounce. As I say that, though, Jinu needs to be a bit careful. Still need to respect the Aatrox and the lack of vision you have in the uh, enemy red side jungle. Yeah, the matchup becomes a lot easier to play once you get that Phage. Oh, actually Ooh. gonna be stealing the ultimate. Curl Force to flash away. Oh, Ooh, the shoot! <laughs> the Solar Flare is not gonna be enough. First Blood to scout in the mid lane. And the emote, complete destruction of Kuro. Kuro thought he had the drop on Scout, and that was not the case. Scout just outplayed the heck out of BLG. The mind games as well, the little fancy feats. You could see Scout was fully aware of what Kuro was trying to do with that ward. You can see it was actually a battle of the visions because they both had vision on each other. And th this is just styling right now. Yeah, that was just so good to watch. Gets the two turret shots to win it. And oh, wow. Abscond go backward, abduct back in, get the kill, get that solo kill, and just show off. And that's what we expect from someone like Scout coming into this series. That's what we wanted to see from someone like Scout as well. Getting those small advantages. That was just a straight up 1v1. And he comes out with the kill and sets up mid lane priority. This is why BLG is triple banning Scout every game this series. Uh, taking a look at the Drake fight. I actually think EDG have a good shot right here because they have a lot of initiation. This is not like the same team composition in game one. EDG can very easily follow up and chase targets down. So if they're coming in and setting up position first, BLG are forced to do uh, to come in on the flanks and they can decide which flank to play on. BLG just uh, back off. And I think that literally stems from that mid lane play. The fact that Kuro has to flash, has to use his ultimate, and has to use teleport to get back into lane priority means they're not in a position to really kind of push themselves forward within that uh, kind of dragon fight. So we see a stolen solar flare going to be used against its owner. Stun of Duct, and actually it's going to be a huge engage coming in here, and EDG just want to start this fight straight away. They are going to use Mako, and here comes Kuro as well. Has got the ultimate available if he wants to stream a shuffle in. He Ooh, will get them two. all out of the, of the Cataclysm as well. But the fight's not over. EDG still pushing oh. back onto this. iBoy picks himself up a double as the feathers fly, and EDG come out on top. iBoy held on to his ultimate for so long right there. It looked like BLG were going to be able to clean up the fight with Kuro coming in, but iBoy stays in it. Scout takes a lot of the damage, drops aggro at the correct moment, and they equalize the tower with a lot of extra kills. Now ADG trying to take this blue buff, will be stolen away by a cheeky little bird off on the river. And overall, three kills for one. BLG starting to feel a little bit, you know, worried. You're kind of a bit shaky. As this was honestly a great initiation from EDG. Yeah, 4v3. And unfortunately for Shingmo, he walks right back into the epicenter of that ultimate, gets stunned down. And uh, looking at Koro right here, he's the one that has to come in and save this. He goes in, gets the double Shurima shuffle, but gets taken out by Scout once again. Very good accuracy on the skill shots. and doesn't allow the uh, the help to come in. On the meantime, though, I think ADD actually beats out Jinu in this one. Yeah, in a quite a few uh, sweet spots. Ooh. And I think, like you said, I think... Uh, wow. Just just straight up... That's silly here. What? That's silly. <laughs> that, he was down to less than 200 HP and still wins it? Aatrox okay, is silly. that explains Jinu's facial expression after that one. I was looking at the minicam, and it was just a look of, so, I wow, don't understand I, how I, that I works that it. way. Well, it shows as well, of course, the importance of having an anti-healing, be it Morello's or an Executioner's Calling. A lot of different things you got to kind of pick up if you want to deal with this Aatrox. You cannot underestimate his pure survivability in those 1v1 situations. But it is a silver lining to otherwise a fun fantastically lost uh, fight in favor that went in favor of EDG and BLG now looking to try and find out where they can get uh, you know back into this game they've lost mid lane tower they've lost priority towards that kind of you know mid lane you know sc uh, scout versus Kuro matchup now they need to try and stall it out because like you said their late game is still very scary 
I just can't believe Aatrox survived that. That's the, the You're power. You're still in awe. I, I know. It's just, it's so insane to think about the ability of Conqueror revitalize and just world ender 60% extra healing. <laughs> just stacked together. Oh, boy. I wouldn't be surprised that Longsword gets turned into a uh, Executioner's by uh, by Jinu later on in this he's series. He's sick of it, too. Yeah, like, he, he's I, just I like, you know what? Outplayed I, that. I, concluded, <laughs> I played better, yet I lost. Uh -huh. <laughs> Overall, though, let's have a quick look at the items as we see now the side of EG starting to ramp up that mid-game power. You've got the Proto Belt and the Zonyas for your Silas. You've got the two items for the crits for your Zaya with the Essence Weaver and the Infinity Edge alongside that Triforce in the top side. But the LG should be able to find Scout here to steal the World Ender. So both of them going to be popping off of that one there. So the TP is going to come in as well. It's oh, going to be gonna Insurance. Be as we see the hookshot coming in now just to try and slow him down, they will be able to get him locked down. But the Baron has been started from the side of the LG. Now the TP on the other side is just going to be able to try and it's get this a 4v4. But Baron down to 3,000 HP, they're going to look for it. The Draven is here, they're going to get knocked back though, and not able to get down. The Baron is still so very, very low. Oh, it's stolen it taken? by taken down, and EDG will take on the ensuing fight. Jinjo just trying to back away with his life, but will eventually go down. EDG, the Baron, the fight, and everything else in game two, they're looking like they're gonna win this one. Disaster strikes here, even though Kuro got the Emperor's Divide down, JJ was still able to flash past it, get the steal down, take Kuro's life, and a massive shift in momentum for the Elder Brother. EDG, we talked about it, we keep saying it, it, you cannot count their first game. Like you said, they like to test the waters, they like to see how the other team is doing, and they've come into the second game like, all right, all right, we gave you one. This is our series, and they are looking so damn strong. The calculations for BLG weren't even that far off. They did know that they had the stuns coming in from Meteor. I just want to see if uh, Meteor did use his ultimate there. It doesn't look like he did, which could have made a large impact in that fight. Not taking down this pink ward is actually huge. Because yeah. it means they know exactly how much time they have. They don't get it down to a below a thousand until now. And it's just straight up a miss smite. Not even smite it away, just a miss smite. I'm actually thinking that he got that with the, the cinder hole. Oh, wow. That's how close that one got, an EDG. They get themselves a 6,000 gold lead. They get themselves, actually 7,000, excuse me. Get themselves the Baron buff. And they could find themselves now looking towards sending us to a, you know, three, four, you know, game four, game five even. That was a very rare gambit that we see BLG make because they're usually very conservative in making plays like this. They know they have the late game scaling, but uh, really did want to rush it. And they get punished so hard for the 50-50. Major I, props to JJ, though. Meteor did his use head. his ult either in that entire mm -hmm. fight. It definitely misplayed on BLG's side. Yeah, you had a lot of tools at your disposal to keep that Jarvan at bay, not having to, you know, the amount of stuns like you talked about, you're able to consecutively use them, but rare mistake, rare gambit we've seen from BLG as we see EDG now using this Baron to full potential. Scout gets locked up, but it's Scout. You're not really going to be able to kill him that quickly. Going to use the legacy of Sharima just to try and shore up the... make sure, I should say, the bot lane inhibitor does not go down but overall EDG they're just they're just toying with BLG right now yeah full control of the map and at this point Kai'Sa doesn't really have that much damage you can see the mirror mana not stacked not completed yet so BLG they have to look for a great stun coming in from uh, from Meteor but you have to remember Ivor at the meantime cleanse plus the feather storm is going to be really safe in these sieges he look at the map right now to see actually all the summoners apart from the Leona Flash available for the side of BLG. EDG respecting that, realizing that their Baron was wearing off, going to reset back themselves away. And it's not over just yet for BLG. The longer this game goes, the, 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 you know, the less relevant that gold lead does become as it does crest about the 9,000 gold. However, it is a scary, scary prospect to think that, you know, 25 minutes into this game, you've got a double Infernal for this Camille, the Silas, the Zaya. You've got three and a half items for the, uh, the Zaya as well. You're, like you said, you're going to need Meteor or ADD to really step up and try and find these engages. 
Bilgy's next mission on the map is just to keep their bases, al <laughs> just to keep their inhibitor towers alive at this point. EDG should be able to dominate the jungle quite freely. They have a bunch of initiations for skirmishes in this area. It's going to be very hard to avoid. It's going to be very difficult for BLG to even step in here. And I do expect them to just fall back, try to play the high ground defense, and wait until a mishap from EDG on the next Baron. Overall, gaining themselves an 8,500 gold lead. EDG with three dragons to the one of BLG. But the one that BLG has is, of course, a mountain. Makes taking Baron with the Kaiser and the Azir that little bit easier, a little bit quicker. And I think that was the, th the thinking they had in their head. It's like, we got a Kaiser, we got an Azir, we also got a Mountain Drake. So we actually potentially could be able to do this. Meteor. Meteor. Award. Does not get jumped on just yet, but the darkness is real. BLG got to respect the fact that they do not have any real vision in their own jungle. It really comes down to EDG's composition. They have too many initiation options. It's very easy for them to collapse through terrain. So BLG, when they saw Silas rotating towards the sector of the map, they instantly backed off. Went straight back into their uh, own base. And that's how they really should play it. Because... Uh, it, 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 this is not like a situation where you can hold on to your raptor uh, raptor vision. EDG just fishing, just throwing the lore out of like, are we here, are we not here, and really looking for something. However, to their detriment, there is no major objective on the map as of yet. And the side of EDG, or sorry, BLG, I feel, will have no real issue giving up a mountain. So there's no real reason for them to kind of fight for that vision or that side of the vision. And importantly for BLG as well, I want to strike this as a pretty, pretty a saving grace, if you like. The bot lane inhibitor did not go down. That's actually kind of huge for them because it means that they do not lose the kind of you know the, the constant pressure in towards that bot lane, bot lane, the one that's furthest away from this Baron pit. We have Baron coming up in 10 seconds. Full team recall. Everyone getting their items and look at the amount of control wards that EDG have into this. They're bringing 11. Uh, sorry, not 11. Nine control wards onto the map with that last purchase. Just the eight, because the solo laners only bought one each. For shame. For shame, Scout. Uh, he used For shame. One of them. Oh, he used one? Yeah, he used one. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I take it back. He just put that down. <laughs> I take it back. Death Cap picked up. Phantom Dancer now for your Zaya. Even more defense alongside the uh, cleanse that you have in the back pocket as well. Summoners are available. This is kind of it for BLG. They need to find an engage. And they have got it. But BLG need to make sure they do not fall down any further. So we see the Leona getting jumped on, getting knocked up, getting pushed back, flash used, as well as the heal from Jin Zhao. And that's going to be a full retreat now for BLG. I don't think they can realistically give up this Baron, though. They need to fight for it. Two summoners burn from BLG, and EDG, quite cleverly on Mako's side, held on to his quickness. So very good uh, allocation of abilities right here. And we're going to see EDG actually transition for the easier objective, taking this relatively slow. Makes sense. Make sure you guarantee that quick Baron take. No vision at the moment for the side of BLG. So with the, with the Dragon going down, they will now know that the EDG side have not quite yet started the Baron objective. See the double trinkets from BLG, so they can still hold out for a while, even though their support can no longer uh, try and clear out vision here. EDG swimming around these dark waters like sharks waiting for their prey. As I say that, though, Clen's going to be used immediately there by iBoy as they look to try and get this fight, but it immediately uh, ADD is blown up. Curl has to get the hell out of Dodge. It's two kills for iBoy, and the rest of the team fight is going to be all e B EDG all the time. They will clean up the rest of these kills, and they will take us to game three with one and one. Fantastic turnaround there from EDG. Great perfect ace coming out from the team. Kuro dies to the red buff, burning down because of iBoy's auto attacks there. Good way to finish. EDG finally find their footing within the matchup. 
two games that look very similar of each other, the choking, the you know, suffocating of another team, the making sure they do not get any objective whatsoever. These are these games are pretty much won and lost within the first 15 minutes of the game, it feels like. I actually wouldn't say so because this game, I felt like BLG was within striking distance. It only collapsed because of the Baron. If you look at their laning phase, the remarks I would have on the series is actually that BLG's laners are good enough to the point where they will not collapse the EDG pressure. However, that was a very uncharacteristic mistake that instantly threw them into a 7,000 gold deficit. They were actually ahead before of that Baron play, as you can see on Barely. the grab right there. Barely. Red, <laughs> Red was uh, BLG, and right after that, boom. <laughs> yeah, it was just straight up EDG all the way, 30-30. I feel like as well, like I notice this quite a bit as well, whoever gets those kind of early rotations out, the kind of quick kind of dragon plays as such, kind of finds themselves in a bit more of a rhythm, bit more of a, a rhyme if you like, and kind of goes, right, we're the ones making the proactive plays and it's up to you to reactively play. And like we said, or like you said, I should say, BLG reacted to that bot lane TP on top of ADD. And unfortunately the reaction just wasn't crisp enough. Yeah, they made a couple of key mistakes here, not getting the smite down, of course, the biggest one, but holding on to the Sejuani ultimate, I, I really don't understand that. Even though you can still smite through it, uh, mm -hmm. you could keep him in a further position, yep. and that would have helped drastically in that one. So, a bit of a misplay there. I, I don't fault the calculations that much, it's just a bit of a surprise to B see BLG go for that one. <laughs> I think as well, like like you said, like you don't fault the decision, it's more of the mechanical kind of setting of it, which is rare for us to say, because like we said, you know, the, the Meteor's had a fantastic year for himself. Kuro and ADD really coming into their own as well. And like we've given testament, they're not falling to the pressure of EDG solo laners. However, when it came down to that kind of clutch moment, the difference between winning and losing was that Baron play. Yeah, that Baron play was just way too massive. However, watching that game too, I actually feel even more confident in BLG. This was EDG, <laughs> I know it sounds weird, but this was EDG doing the early game correctly. Mm -hmm. They had a strong focus on one of the lanes and they were not able to crack it. Look at how ADD played the link. He got a vertical jungle early on. He was 3v1 tower dove with the Herald buff, and he still won the lane pretty yeah. handedly. That was artificially forced by EDG to keep Janu ahead. And at the same time, you could see that gold grab. 15 minutes in, BLG were even in the lead. So yeah. the main strength for EDG has really evaporated. And if BLG just don't make a Baron throw again, I, I actually... I actually feel better for their chances after game two, even though it was an EDG victory. We'll have to wait and see how BLG fare in game three. We're going to throw it to a quick break, and when we return, we will continue this best of five series.